Hello everybody and welcome to a visual novel game called Cinderella Phenomenon. If you're a fan of visual novels, you know that this is about multiple endings. Um, but we're just gonna do one. Um, and yeah. I don't know if I want to make it into a series or if I want to just do one. But, yeah. Re recommend viewing the tutorial if it's your first time playing a Renby visual novel. Um, I already know what to do, so. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. One was a crystallium Lucius, protected by the ruler of the fairies. The other was the crystallum tene tenebrum, which was watched over by the high leader of the witches. Lucius was sustained by love, happiness, and joy. The tenebrum by fear, anger, and hatred. The fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. They regulated the powers of the crystals in order to maintain balance between darkness and light. For there can be no joy without sadness, no courage without fear. The kingdom was at peace for a time. <clears throat> then one day, a traveling bard decided to write stories, tales of the magic and wonders of the kingdom. He named these stories Fairy Tales. In Fairy Tales, the light always emerged victorious, and true love was the usual reward. The fairy tales spread further than could have been predicted. The humans of the kingdom began to believe that fairy tales were true and that the magic of the witches was inherently wicked and cruel. The witches became hated and feared. Eventually they were hunted like animals. The witch hunt. The high leader of the witches in all of her anger created the fairy tale curse. You think we are wicked? So be it. Just as you have taken her happily ever after, so we shall take yours. The witches use the fairy tale curse to attack humans, indiscriminately, ultimately throwing the kingdom into chaos and darkness. The ruler of the fairies, Licious Barrier, sought to regain peace. But the witches were blinded by their hatred for humans, who were responsible for the witch genocide. A terrible war, the Great War, began. Eventually, the Tenenbaum barrier, bearer, the high level of witches, was finally defeated. The Tenenbaum was lost. Peace was restored, and the light once again triumphed. But darkness can never fully disappear. It waits in the shadows, patient for when its time will inevitably return. Contract. Okay, we'll sign. Uh... Um, there we go. Enter. Prologue. The princess. Or ice princess, my bad. Or was it? The, my name is Natalie Riala Brighton, daughter of King Gennaro Brighton III. I'm the crown princess of the kingdom of Anjali. At least, that was who I used to be. But that was before yesterday, when I became a victim of the infamous fairy tale curse. This is the long game, by the way. It'll be in parts. Everyone has forgotten my birthright. Now I am nothing more than a lowly peasant. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. But no, this is my reality now. I still have no idea what I must do to break the curse. I close my eyes and remember that day. It had started like any other day. Have you heard? Another person was cursed. I'm on my way to the dining hall for breakfast when I stop and listen to the sound of hushed voices. There are two maids standing next to each other with brooms in hand. These two are slacking off again. It's terrible. What fairy tale curse was it? They say it was Pinocchio. Pinocchio, the fairy tale with the lying boy whose nose grows longer? That's awful. You know, more and more people have been getting cursed lately. You think those wicked witches are up to something again? I thought the fairy tale curses would stop after you know who was defeated. 
You two were hired to work, not talk. Well, we're sorry, your highness. As can only be expected from the likes of them. I'm a bitch in the early beginning. Another fairy tale curse. The fairy tale curse started spreading even before the Great War began. I do not have much interest in its effects, even now. After all, most humans probably deserve to get cursed. The victims are weak. Anjali would be better off without the dead weight. If we're up to me, mother. I mean, if it were up to, if it were up to mother, the cursed would have been banished from Anjali the instant they fell prey to it. But mother's not here anymore, and she will not come back ever. Princess, the king and queen are waiting in the dining hall. I'm on my way. The king, Ophelia, and Rod are all present in the dining hall. Someone is conspicuously missing, but I ignore their absence. Good morning, Natalie. Good morning, your majesty. Good morning, Natalie. Oof. Natalie. Ophelia. Ophelia Widensall. Every day I wonder why my father, the king, married a lowly baker. She can never be a true queen, for she pales in comparison to mother. I take my seat next to the king, then look up at the person sitting opposite me. A blonde boy. Rod Benedict Winsolov. White and soft. My stepbrother is bored and quiet as usual. He is two years my junior, and he is the youngest of, younger of Ophelia's children. He is mute and uses, uses a plush bunny to voice his thoughts. It was apparently given him by a fairy. He minds his own business and is easy to deal with. But his older sister... Mai's go the empty seat beside him. She's probably the most infuriating person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. I'm so sorry, I'm late. I was reading and forgot the time. And here she is. Good morning, dear father. Mother. Good morning, Rod. And good morning, you too, Natalie. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Emmeline White and Sob, Rod's elder sister and my stepsister. She acts as if we are blood, as if she too were born a princess. As if she could be crown princess, perhaps steal my place. I'll never let that happen. Now that everyone is here, let us begin. Butlers glide inside with silver trays to carefully, to carefully serve us breakfast. So, Emmeline, you're reading the very tale books that the king brought you? Oh yes, there's so many in there, you're all so wonderful. Thank you so much, father. I mean, sorry. Thank you so much, father. I'm happy that you like them. I love them. So strange the library didn't have any of them to begin with. That is because mother hated them. She had all the books burned. <gasps> but why? They're such charming stories. Fairy tale misled humans into believing they can have things they do not deserve. Fame, riches, love, happily ever afters. And when their wishes do not come to fruition, exactly as they, as they, as they, that want them to, the humans blame the witches for granting them in the first place. What are you implying about the witches, Natalie? The atmosphere shifts, the air in the room growing heavy. I continue to eat. Perhaps witches are not responsible for the evil in this world. Perhaps humans are the cause of their own downfall. Have you any idea what you were talking about, child? Witches have caused nothing but pain and suffering in this kingdom. Even now, they still spread the fairy tale curse to our innocent subjects. The truth is, I know very little about the time the witches had free reign over Anjali. I was very young then. Mother forbade me to leave the palace, sometimes even my room. I know nothing of the people's supposed pain and suffering. Mother kept me away from everyone, and so I cannot bring myself to care. How do you know the cursed are innocent? Our people have been toiling day and night to rebuild Anjali after the Great War. Our people are the kingdom's foundation, and I am and I, uh, and I am endlessly grateful for their determination and resolve. Every day I wonder what your mother taught you about. Leave mother out of this. Dear, please. Natalie, darling, your father didn't mean to. I'm not one of your children, Ophelia. I do not need her sympathy. I, 
Natalie, you will show your mother respect. She is not my mother. I set down my fork and knife and stand up. Stood up. I am done. Excuse me. My father and I have never got on, but our relationship has significantly worsened since he married the baker. The lowly peasant woman. I'm just kidding. My father, the king, it has been 17 years and I never felt any love from him. Yikes. He treats Amelaine and Rod, who only entered her life one year ago, like his own children. Better than he has ever treated me. That's sad. This has been my life ever since Mother passed away four years ago. Mother was the only one that was there for me when no one else was. If it wasn't for the accident during the Great War, she would still be here. Why the sour face so early in the morning, Princess? Oh, yeah. Let me guess. It's the King, the Queen, or Princess Emmeline. Or is it all of them? I ignore his question. Fritz, what are you doing here so early? I'm running some errands for my father. Fritz Gerald Aiden Leverton, son of the highest knight of the Order of Caldera. His father, Sir Alcaster, has served the royal family for many years. Sir Alcaster is one of the king's most trusted advisors. Three years ago, Fritz was assigned the honor of becoming my personal knight. Ooh. His presence is the only company I can tolerate nowadays. You should wait in the throne room then. Thank you. Princess, yes. You know, I haven't seen you smile once since I met you. Why is that of any importance? Still, I do hope to see you smile one day, Princess. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I'll see you at ten. Ten? Don't tell me you've forgotten. Forgotten what? You're going to town today, remember? I deflate as the realization dawns upon me. It has been two days since the king issued the order. Going back in time. Natalie, I would like you to accompany Emmeline on one of her town outings. Surely you could send maids with her instead. I would not have requested you to accompany her if I was going to send her with her maids. I want you to make an effort to get along with your sister. Step, sister. She is your sister and you will treat her and Ron as if they were of your blood. That's getting toxic. Two days from now, you are going to accompany Emmeline outside. It has been four years since you last left the palace. Ever since then, you have locked yourself away. You barely leave your room. Anjali was in the grip of war back then, but now the kingdom is safe and back to its former glory. I want to see how beautiful Anjali really is. Natalie, a princess must know her kingdom. Go with Emmeline and she will show you the town that you will only ever see through your windows. They only ever see through your windows. Is that an order? If it needs to be. Are we clear? Natalie, understood. The last time I left the palace was four years ago, when the king took me with him to check on the people after the Great War had ended. I shake my head, removing myself from the memory. I am safe here. Princess, are you alright? It won't be that bad. The townsfolk are good people. How can you be so sure? Times have changed. People have changed. That is precisely the problem. Mother never changed. Mother loved me until the end. Sometimes change is for the better, Princess. I think you'll see that today. If you'll excuse me, I shall see you later. Now this is my bedroom. Oh, I remember this part. Delora, do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? I wish you could talk to me, you and the others. My dolls are my only friends. That's sad. Uh... They are the only ones I can trust. Unlike humans, they will never betray me. They will never hurt me. They will always be there for me. The moment I saw Dolora, I knew she was special. She was special. She was different, so elegant and realistic. It was almost as if she was breathing. She was a gift from the king on my 17th birthday. I only started receiving dolls from him when mother passed away. Mother does not believe in birthday celebrations. But every year at midnight, a letter would appear under my door. It would contain instructions leading me through the palace on an adventure to a room filled with gifts, cakes, and sweets. A child's dream. I had been fascinated by the dolls, which had always held a little greeting card. A card with the words, I love you, on it signed by M. The card would tell me to keep those celebrations a special secret, but I didn't need to be told that. Mother always found a way to show me she cared, still cared. In her own way. The secret celebrations had stopped as soon as she had disappeared. Yes? 
Excuse me, your highness, the king has requested your presence. This better not be another lecture. Tell him I'm on my, I am on my way. Yep. I'll see you later, Delora. Oh. Good morning, your highness. Sir Mythros. Sir Mythros, the royal advisor. Father trusts him a great deal, just like he does Sir Alcaster. Every day you look more and more like your mother. I sometimes find Sir Mythros talking to mother's porch when he thinks no one is looking. He must have a crush on my mom. He must have admired her a lot, but I cannot bring myself to think highly of him. There is something about him that, he, that puts me on edge. Are you on your way to the see the king? I shall not keep you then. Until our next meeting, dear princess. Your majesty. <clears throat> Natalie, are you ready? You will enjoy this, Natalie. I've heard the toy shop is lovely dolls. This will be good for you. So we're going doll shopping. You'll get to know your sister better, and you'll be able to interact with and learn about the people of Anjali, about our subjects. I will not learn anything I do not already know. Why do you always believe that the people around you are incapable of good? Because I have seen how quickly people will betray and manipulate each other to get what they want. Mother warned me about human nature. That's nice. That's true, though. Uh, you do not see clearly, Natalie. If you would only open your eyes, you would be able to see how good people really are sometimes. I believe I'm already quite capable of seeing the true nature of people. After all, I have seen that there is no good in you. Damn. Natalie, I... Where were you when I needed you four years ago? Where have you been ever since? Back then, I had been overflowing with grief and pain. I just lost mother, my entire world. I hope that maybe then he would have shown me love and compassion. Even just a hug to let me know someone was there. It had been a childish hope I had been left alone. I did not see him for months, had barely even heard his voice. You cannot rely on anyone but yourself. You cannot trust anyone but yourself. This is what you have taught me, your majesty. I know that I've hurt you. I know that there is nothing in Dido tone for what I did. But please, Ophelia and her children are not a part of that. They do not deserve to be hated. In the end, they still matter more to him than I ever did. Natalie, enough! I have already said I will go. Everyone is waiting outside. I shudder at the thought of leaving the palace after so many years. Natalie, it will be okay. How can you be so sure? Thank you for agreeing to accompany Emmeline. I would not disobey any order from the king. Excuse me. Now we're in the toy shop. Hello, how can I help? Virika, Viorica, Virika. I can't say that right. <laughs> Emmeline, I mean Princess Emmeline, how good to see you. I trail Emmeline, ignoring her as she embraces her friend. I glance around the small shop. The dolls displayed are nowhere near the quality of the ones in my room. I cannot understand why Emmeline insisted she buy gifts to her friends here. I cannot believe I'm outside the palace. There's no need to be so tense. There's no need to be so tense, Princess. I would never let anything happen to you. Your only job is to relax and enjoy yourself. You ask the impossible of me. There's no need to be formal, Viorica. I'm still the same as I was. Oh yes, Rod's come along as well. It's been a while, Viorica. So good to see you again too, Rod. And I must introduce you to Her Highness, the Crown Princess Natalie. The look in Viorica's face as she takes a step back from me is all too familiar. Fear. My apologies for being so rude, Your Highness. Good morning. Um, uh, and this is Sir Fitzgerald, Sir Alcaster's son. It is a pleasure to meet you, my lady. Oh, you're Sir Fitzgerald. You really are as handsome as Emily described in her letters. I'm sorry? P -p Please don't mind her, Sir Fitzgerald. I'm sorry, Emily. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what brings you all the way here? Oh, I'm here to get some toys, gifts for some new friends. Toys from here, are you sure? Of course I am. I cross my arms. I would prefer we finish this errand as quickly as possible. Yes, of course. I'm sorry, Your Highness. Princess, 
I can barely breathe in here. I just want to go back to the palace. Oh, yeah. This is a guy, by the way. Dressed as a woman. Good morning. Beautiful lady, that's her name. Up until this point, I always considered Mother to be the fairest beauty in the land. The lady that walks in proves me wrong. Her beauty is mesmerized and clearly without peer. Everyone in the shop is openly staring. Oh, you're early today, ma'am. I have some important errands to run today, and are the items ready now? Oh, of course, let me go and fetch them for you. I'll be just one mo moment, Emmeline. Why is she smiling at me? Here you are, ma'am. Thank you. Ah, uh, that lady was beautiful, right? Any girl standing next to her becomes a hopelessly ugly by comparison. Who is she? She's new around town. Some say that she's a fairy. A fairy? Fairies have saved Anjali from the witches four years ago. Everyone considered them our saviors. And yet the fairies are still unable to stop the fairy tale curse from spreading. Here you go. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Birka. I hope to draw by again soon. Good, I'll look forward to seeing you again. I hope to see you again soon as well, Rod. Likewise. Leaving the palace was a bad idea. While I am out, I am the center of attention. Some townsfolk point and stare at me. Most, however, make a point of avoiding me, because I'm a bitch. Like I am the plague. There are some spiteful stares, but thankfully none are nearly as intense as they were four years ago. I'm sure the townsfolk are only surprised to see you again after so many years. Right. Fritz and Rod lag behind us, which leaves only Emmeline walking beside me. I cannot decide which is worse, the staring or her company. Oh, Natalie, look, the street performance. It's been so long since I last watched one. Street performance? Oh, this guy, this is a little boy. Good day, everyone. My name is Waltz, and I'm here to spread some happiness and magic. Yay. The boy named Walt snaps his fingers and colorful flower petals start to rain down from the sky. Isn't that pretty, Natalie? And are those the princesses over there? It is an honor to have you in attendance. Please accept this humble gift. He snaps his fingers and white lilies appear in his hand. Nice. Oh, thank you. The boy looks at me as if expecting some kind of reaction. When he gets nothing from me, he sighs and gives me a weary smile. I hope to see you again during my next show. We'll definitely try. He gracefully bows before moving back into his area to perform more magic tricks for a gathering crowd. There are performers like this all around Anjali. I love them. Maybe someday we'll get to see some musicians too. Those are my favorite. I do not intend to leave the palace again. <gasps> but... You don't like it out here? Ron and I grew up here. I love Anjali, and this is my favorite part of the kingdom. I wanted to share this with you, Natalie. I know you didn't really want to come, but you still tagged along. That means a lot to me, so thank you. I do not, I did not do this for you. I'm only here because the king ordered me to go with you. Oh, now I'm being a bitch. I just want us to be closer, Natalie. I would like to try and be your friend. I do not want or need your friendship. No matter how you act around me, we are not and will never be sisters. I take care of to rem I take care to remember that if I were you. But I Rod suddenly grabs my hand, pulling me away from Mom Amelie. Stop! He is staring daggers at me. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him angry. I don't blame him. Rod, don't let me go. Both of you want to stay away from me. I feel the heavy atmosphere as I turn to look at the people staring at us. Their expressions mirror the looks of disdain I saw years ago. Anger, disgust, hatred. I begin to walk away. No one likes this spoiled brat. Princess, wait! Don't follow me. Princess. Oh, there I go. I adjust my cloak, making sure my face is hidden from view. I never should have left the palace. As I walk around, I watch the people bumbling down the streets. So carefree. They work so hard for so little reward. They could work their entire lives and never have a fraction of what I have. And yet, they are happy. And I... I heard Anis lost her job at the palace. It's pr true. Crown Princess Natalie made sure the poor girl was fired. I stopped my tracks and mention of my name. Not again. Anise? Was that the name of the one maid that tore Dolores' dress? My doll's dress? Really? 
If so, my decision to fire her was justified. A palace maid cannot be clumsy. Why should I tolerate poor performance? What did I do that was so wrong? I know the niece, hardworking and big-hearted, very good with medicine. Shame she lost her job so quickly. You know how hard the crown princess is to please. My friend in the palace says she doesn't even smile, only goes around with that cold look on her face. That's probably why she called her the Ice Princess. <gasps> Ice Princess? So all those times I heard the servants saying that, I'd always suspected they were talking about me. She's the complete opposite of our Princess Emmeline. That child's an angel. We all know she should be Crown Princess. Annoyance begins to simmer inside me. I cannot stand in hearing any more, so I walk away. Ever since Emmeline entered my life, I'm always being compared to her. And now I have become second best. I'm Natalie Riella Brighton, daughter of King Gennaro the Brighton III, and the Crown Princess of the Kingdom of Anjali. I am of royal blood. She is... She is nothing. There you are. Princess, you must come back with me. It is getting too late for you to remain outside. Princess, are you alright or are you hurt? I brush him off and turn away. No need to fuss. Let us return to the palace. Leaving the palace was physically and mentally draining. My bed is welcoming to my unusually heavy body. I turn my head and meet Dolores' glassy glaze gaze from where she sits on my shelf. I left the palace today, Dolores. It was the same as all those years ago. Everyone looked at me like I was... What have I ever done to deserve those looks? How can I be so hated? Can you see outside herself, Ice Princess Girl? Ice Princess. I wish Mother was here. I look at the smiling faces of my dolls. At least I still have all of you. I yawn and stretch my arms. Good night, Dolora. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder where you are. Singing, but who? Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I blink my eyes open only to see Dolores sitting right in front of me on my bed. That's kind of creepy. Moonlight spills across her delicate features. How I wonder what you are. Wasn't she on the shelf with all the other dolls when I went to bed? D- Laura? It's almost time. I pinch my cheeks to make sure I'm not dreaming. It hurts. Only ten minutes before the clock strikes twelve. Ugh. I hope you're ready, princess. What? My dolls turned to human. How? Who are you? You know who I am. I've been watching you since the day your father gave me to you. What is happening? I don't think I've ever been so confused in my life. All the answers will come with time, but right now I'm here to give you something, princess. Ooh. A glass slipper. Is this Cinderella's very own glass slipper? It is beautiful, too beautiful, then a realization be Oh, my bad. It is beautiful, too beautiful, then a realization begins to dawn upon me. You're a witch. Smart girl. I knew you'd figure that out eventually. Now it's time to say goodbye to your precious crown. What? Next day. Da, da, da. Sweet dreams, Cinderella. Oof. Here we go, Cinderella phenomenon. Hey, wake up, girl. Huh? Now I'm in rags. I'm a peasant. A lonely female peasant. Well, where am I? Oh, my head. You have some nerve sleeping in front of my shop. Leave before a customer sees you. You ugly wench. <laughs> Sorry. I was in my room. How can I? How am I here? Do you not hear what I said, you filthy child? Filthy? You would speak to your crown princess in such a manner? If you're the crown princess, then I'm the queen. You must have been knocked on the head quite hard to have such grand delusions. I'm not delusional. I'm Natalie Riella Brighton, blood daughter of King Gennaro Brighton III and the queen, crown princess of Anjali. Right. The king never had a daughter with that witch. Is she referring to mother? Witch? Don't pretend to be stupid, girl. I can only stare at her puzzled. Our good king only has stepchildren, Princess Emmeline and Prince Rod. And you are most definitely neither of them. What? Now get gone before I go spouting your crazy gibberish to my customers and scare them away. With a huff, she leaves me to my own rapidly turning thoughts. I quickly realize that I'm wearing tattered clothes and that I do not, do not even have shoes on. No, 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 no. This cannot be happening. That's scary when you're royalty and then you turn peasant-like. Something shines against my chest, quote unquote. Something shines against my chest and I reach up to grab it. 
I have to find all the pieces. This is... It all floods back. Delora being a witch. Cinderella's glass slipper. This is not a dream. Delora gave me the fairy tale curse. My hands begin to tremble. I must return the palace to speak with the king. Let me in. Sorry, girl, but this place is off limits to uninvited guests. You do not understand. I'm Crown Princess Natalie Riella Brighton. I must speak with my father. As loath as I am to call him that, I have to. No one will believe me if I am addressing him by title. You best leave now, nice and quiet, before he had to force you. If you would only... Make way for the king. The gates swing open and three out horses trot out. Soldiers ride two of the horses while the last horse has a different familiar rider. Father! I immediately move to block the path of his horse. The soldiers move to hold me back. Your majesty. What is this? Your majesty, this girl has claimed to be your daughter. Daughter? Oh no. Both of my stepchildren are in the palace right now. What even if father is... What? Even father is part of this? Father, you must help me. A witch has cursed me. For once in your life, just once, help me. You must believe me. Tell me, where is your family, child? Why are you all alone? He looks at me with pity in his eyes. He is looking at me more kindly as a peasant than he ever did when I was a crown princess. That's his job. And his daughter. I recoil. You must be hungry. Take this. Oh god, pouches and... Is that coins? This should feed you and your family for a day or two. Yeah, it's pounds. Uh, or coins. Money. The, um, the kingdom offers work opportunities to those who need them. Please let your parents know. I do not want your pity, father. Please escort this girl back to her home. Make sure she gets there safely. At once, your majesty. I watched my father and his two guards ride away on their horses, leaving me to stand in their dust. He left me alone again. Where's your home, girl? There's nowhere left for me to go. Father has forgotten me. Leave me. I'm sad. No, look here. Orders were to leave me alone. Sue yourself. Can't say we didn't try. Don't cause any more scenes, little girl. I watch with bleary eyes as the soldiers return to the palace. How can this be happening? I stir the small pouch in my hands. I do not know what hurts more. The fact that I have just been unceremoniously paraded around from my home like I am nothing more than a piece of garbage. Or the fact that my own father does not recognize me. Oh, look at that girl's hideous dress. How difficult it is to be poor. I clutch the pouch close to my chest as I run to an empty alley. I huddle in a corner trying to become as small as possible. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping that when I next open them, everything will be back to normal. A dream? No matter what happens, you must not leave the palace. Why? The world is cruel. People will only ever hurt you. But they are always so nice to me. That is only because you are the crown princess. They will only ever think of what they can take from you. I'm trying to protect you, my love. That is why you must never leave the palace. Never leave mother. I'm the only one who will ever love you so much. Do you understand? I understand. Chapter 1. The Marchin. When I open my eyes, I am still in the streets, so I must have fallen asleep. But the nightmare continues. I am cold in my rags. I hold myself for warmth, willing some of the cold away, but fail. My feet are numb and in pain, caked in the dirt that I have gathered from walking barefoot around town. Well, there's a frightful sight. Beggar probably thought she could try her luck with the nobility that live around here. Ah, just look at how ragged she looks. <gasps> what are you looking at? A two, a two women that lack the basic manners of a noble upbringing. Silence, girl. Do you know who you're talking to? No, and I don't care. What nerve? Let's just go. There's no reason to stoop to a commoner's level. I will remember you. And once I break this curse, I'll make you regret your words. I become acutely aware of the fact that I have not eaten anything for almost a day. I have been sitting around here, sitting here thinking on the new mess that is my life. But moping around will not break my curse. Crying will not help either. I should find that witch first, but how? I have no idea where she is. Delora, I swear I'll make you regret doing this to me. When I find you, I... 
I will find food first. <clears throat> Is this all the king thinks I am worth? Oh, leave, girl. A dirty peasant like you has no place in this restaurant. But why? I can pay. Find another place. You're scared away my customers. Am I not a customer? Shoo, there's nothing for you here. You just wanted me away like a fly, the nerve. Sensing that this will get me nowhere, I ball my hands into fists and walk away. I get the same treatment at the next three restaurants I try, and I'm treated as something that less than dirt, like my money has no real value. I am the crown princess, they have no right to turn me away like this. I've been eating still bread, anything to keep the hunger at bay. The bread barely helps. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bakery. There are croissants on display that make my mouth water. Slowly, I begin to make my way over there. Ow! My feet ache with every step. They look and feel even worse than before. I've only had enough coins for a pair of shoes, but food is more important. If the rags that I'm wearing and the pouch of money are all that I have, then I need to prioritize. And I will die before I beg. Two croissants. You'll need to pay, girl. There are no free handouts here. I take a coin from my pouch and hand it to her. This should be more than enough. The shop owner stares at the coin before reluctantly taking it. She hands me two croissants in a paper bag. I will not ask where he got these, those coins. Are you implying that I stole them? How else would a beggar like you get that amount of coins? Now be off with you, child. Won't have you scared away any other customers. Without another word, I turn and start to walk away from the woman. So this is the goodness of the people of Anjali. I take a bite out of one of the croissants, cringing a little at the dryness. Hey girl, what now? We started the shop. Want to share how you got your coins there? Excuse me? Look at her brushing us off like she's royalty or something. Let me go! You ain't no better than us. Now be a good girl and over that pouch. The man on my left grabs at my pouch and attempts to get away from me. I will not let those brutes take anything from me. I elbow the man in the stomach, then aim a kick at the other man's shin. I have an opening and I take it. Whoa! I pull myself free and begin to run as fast as I can. Hey! Where do I go? I'm not familiar with streets at all. It's highly likely that I'm just going to hit a dead end. Where should I go? Let's go right. <clears throat> hey, this way. You're no time to talk, princess. How do you know who I am? There's another one. Start burning you two. Come on. The boy grabs my wrist and pulls me after him. He takes off with a sudden burst of speed, and then I am running even faster than I just was. I'm not entirely convinced following him is a good idea, but at least the boy seems to have a better sense of direction than me. Oh, our running causes rocks in the pathway to come loose, and before I notice him in my path, I step down hard on them. A sharp pain shoots up into my foot and I collapse to the ground. It hurts. Princess, I try to stand but the pain in my feet is unbearable. I fall back down into the dirt with a gasp. Can't. We've got you now. Just hand over your coins and neither of you will get hurt. I won't let you touch her. Ha, says the little boy. Well, well, well. What is this ghastly sight before me? Two adults threatening a child and a lady. How very ungentlemanly. What are the likes of you even doing around this neighborhood? You asking to get fleeced? Asking? Perhaps I am in the mood for a scuffle. Whoa, he brought out a sword, honey. The noble man brandishes a sword. His expression confident, maybe even cocky. Show me what you got, sirs. And please don't pour me. Who are these people? I ain't dealing with this for the money. He's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. <gasps> this is way too much trouble for a little gold. You're late. Sorry, kid. You know how hard it is for me to be invisible around here. Wait, what did he just call me? At ease, small one. These two know each other? I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding, my feet feel simulously <laughs> like they are frozen and on fire. My stomach grumbles, the hunger coming back with vengeance. My body feels light. Hey, hey, princess, 
Princess! Calm down, Parfait. We'll be able to help her. But for now, we need to move before anyone sees us. Yeah. Don't worry, you're safe now. I made the right choice. Chris not bright indicates that you have made the right choice. A particular love interest is this one. Each color corresponds to certain love interests. They also appear belatedly after you make a choice. Keep your eyes and ears open. Don't worry, you're safe now. Everything is fading. A dream? What is that in your hands, Natalie? I... It was hurt. I just wanted to help it out, but it died. It is all my fault. It's not your fault, my love. It died because it was weak. But this is the world, Natalie. Only the strong survive. The weak got, get cast aside to die. You were not weak. You were strong, my crown princess, and you do not cry. Now wipe your tears. I don't want to see you cry again. Do you understand? Yes. Now get rid of that thing and wash your hands. Did you not hear me, child? Y yes, mother. Oh, you're awake. Well, where am I? Oh, well, um, this is my room. <laughs> my hand flies to my chest where the little glass slipper hangs from my neck. Still here. Are you okay, miss? This girl is a maid that tore Dolores' dress. The one I fired for her clumsiness. What a coincidence. Miss, do you think that I would meet her again here like this? Um, leave me alone. Right, of course. Um, here's some salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Now what? Haven't thought it? Haven't thought it all, have you, Ice Princess? You? Suddenly there she is. Dolores stands before me with a snide smile, looking happy with herself. She is a cause of everything I've been through. All the pain, heartache, and hunger. It is her fault. I try to stand, thinking to give the witch a piece of my mind, but as soon as my feet touch the floor, pain shoots up my leg. I end up falling back to the bed. Ow! You should be more grateful to the girl you just scared away. She's been taking care of you for the past two days. Two days? I've been passed out for two days. I'm suddenly vibrating with anger. Remove the curse. Now. Huh. Do you think you just command me to remove the curse in your best princess voice? What do you want, gold? What I want is worth more than all the gold you could summon in Anjali, princess. Besides, haven't you read your fairy tales? The caster cannot take a curse back. You need to focus on breaking the curse yourself if you want your life back. Mother burned the books before I could read more than one or two of them. I do not think either involved curses, just genies and trading away your voice for legs. Ah, it's good that you're awake, princess. Parfait, should you really be up and about? Don't fuss, I'm feeling much better. Are you a witch as well? <clears throat> oh no, I'm par my name is Parfait, and I'm a fairy. A witch and a fairy in one room? Being friendly with one another? Impossible. Oh, look at her face. You weren't expecting that at all, were you, princess? What is going on? I'm sure you have many questions, princess. How do you know I am the princess? Don't be silly. She's a fairy. Of course she knows. I promise we'll do our best to answer your questions. I don't even know where to start. What would you like to know? What would you like to know? Why was I cursed? Seriously? You're really gonna ask that? I wouldn't have asked if I knew the answer. You have such a temper on you. Very well. This one's got a simple answer. It's because you're a cold-hearted, cruel, wicked princess who deserves to be punished. Delora! A curse is the only way to force her you to change her horrid ways. Delora, you could have put that more nicely. Um... I'm pretty sure I was already being nice. Change? Why do I need a change? Are you completely unaware of how heartless you are to other people? The coldness you show up to, you, to your step-family and your father? The way you treat Princess Emmeline? Princess Emmeline? Why would they need to be treated indifferently? You need to prove they have some goodness in you, Princess. Some smidge of kindness. Why? People only show you kindness when they want something from you. The instant they get what they want, they'll just throw you away. 
Eh. What else would I like to know? How do I break the curse? The necklace you've got is one of Cinderella's glass slippers. To break the curse, you must get the second slipper. Complete the pair. And how do I do that? By doing three good deeds. What? It's a very easy thing to do. At least for someone who knows how to be good. Three good deeds? What does that even mean? I wouldn't even know where to start. Take heart, princess. Goodness is innate in everyone. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong character. Take it. Oh, whatever. Are you sure this is a case with this one? Dolores, you are not helping. I'm a witch, and I think I'm more goodness in my big toe than she has in her entire body. Now you're just being mean. For every good deed you accomplish, you will get a piece of the glass slipper. When you've gotten all three, you'll complete the pair, and the curse will break. Simple. I suggest you start by polishing the attitude of yours. What else would you like to know? What happens if I don't break the curse? I think you know the answer to that one already, princess. What else would you like to know? Why are you two working together? To answer that, we'll have to give you a bit of a history lesson. Oh, I've got this. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. Dramatics aside, there is one crystal in the kingdom called the Crystallium... Crystallum Lucius. It is powered by kind of happiness and love. The other is a Crystallum Tenebrum, powered by fear and anger. So we got the good and the evil. Or the bad. The strongest of witches is the Tenebrum Bearer. The strongest of fairies is the Lucius Bearer. Parfait is the Lucius Bearer. Parfait is the Lucius Bearer. I'd taken par... <coughs> I'd taken Parfait's frail and sickly appearance. She is the strongest fairy? The Great War greatly damaged me. My powers are a fraction of what they used to be. And with no child, I have no successor in my burden. What does a bearer do? The bearers regulate the energy of the crystals and keep the balance between darkness and light. For centuries, the sent fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. Until a certain human decided to be a pest. Who was he? I knew him as Hans Gabriel Grimm. He wrote the fairy tales, Brothers Grimm, or whatever. And he started the feud between the witches and the fairy tales, fairies in the process. How could a single person have so much power? Grimm's fairy tale. <clears throat> it was the power of his words. In Grimm's stories, the witches were always evil. The humans naturally grew to be fear and hate them. They began to haunt them. Hunt them. Didn't the witches fight back? We aren't allowed to use their powers to cause harm. But that all changed when the Ten and Brown Bear decided revenge is more important than her promise. The witches took over the kingdom. They created the fairy tale curse to spread even more sadness and anger to fill the human heart with negative emotions. All to fuel the power of the Ten and Brown. The delicate balance of harmony between the crystals was broken. The witches and the Ten and Brown grew far, far stronger than they were ever meant to be. We had no choice but to fight. And then the Great War happened. The Tin and Brown Bearer, Bearer was eventually defeated. The Great War was ended with the help of an unexpected ally, but many lives were lost. The Good Witch has suffered horribly. We still have to stay hidden in hopes of having any kind of peace. Are you trying to make me believe that there are good witches? The Tin and Brown can poison a heart and mind to darkness and cruelty. The witches put themselves at risk in working with the Ten and Brom and maintaining his harmony. Some inevitably are corrupted. Many good witches were corrupted during the war. Most remain that way. Many do not believe it, but witches can be just as kind as fairies. Are you a good witch or a bad witch? That's how it's. And yet it hasn't a fairy wasn't a fairy that cursed me. And yet it wasn't a fairy that cursed me. I've done good by cursing you, Princess. You'll thank me when you've broken it. Delora was not corrupted by the Tenenbaum. She's as good as they come. Hopefully you'll come to see that for yourself. I doubt it. Apart from it, after, for my own inherent goodness, Parfait and I are working together because we have a common goal. Which is... To restore the balance between darkness and light. Three good deeds and I get my life back. Easier said than done. You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't you just go to a ball and find a prince? What does doing good have to do with that? Going to a ball, finding a prince, is also old-fashioned. No fun in that. Cinderella's girl with a pure heart. She's always willing to help others, even when they are cruel to her. True. That's what being a prince is. 
Anyway, I brought some clothes for you. I'll leave them on the table. We'll be waiting outside. There's some people I'd like you to meet. I cannot believe this. I look down at my neatly bandaged feet. I have to admit that while sore, they are nowhere near as painful as they had been two days before. Here's some salve I made for you to help with the pain. Why would she even care? I was the reason she lost her job at the palace. Oh. She probably doesn't remember me as a princess, but still, she has no reason to do such things for me. I ignore the salve for the time being, and gingerly stand up testing my feet for pain. The injury is definitely helping. Healing. I slowly walk over the table and change into the clothes that have been left there. The dress is nowhere near as luxurious as the ones that I wore in the palace, but still it is far improved from my rags. All my life I've never had to lift a finger, and now I will not let them see how much they have rattled me. I refuse to break. Just watch me. I'll free myself from this curse. Meanwhile, back downstairs the tavern. <laughs> What is this place? There are several people in the room chatting am amiably, amiably, am amiably with each other, I guess it is. I noticed the girl that had left me the salve by the counter serving drinks. But as soon as the people in the room notice me, the room falls into immediate silence. Well, look at what we have here. That is Princess herself, huh? They know who I am? I didn't think it to be tr was true. Curse for cold heartedness. As to be expected. You remember who I am, and yet you still treat me like this. Well, you aren't really a princess anymore, are you? You're one of us now, girl. Everyone, please, you shouldn't be treating a newcomer like this. Princess, let me apologize. I mean no offense. I cannot believe that. Now when the people parfait is referring to simply smirk and shrug as I meet their gazes. What is this place? Welcome to the Ma Marchin Tavern. A home for those with a fairy tale curse. You make it sound like some kind of holiday house. To ruin my moment, Delora. Martian? Tavern? The Martian was built three years ago when the number of cursed and Anjali continued to rise. The goal is to gather those affected so they might help each other break their curse. Of course, I'm also here to prove help is necessary. Only the curse and those allied with our cause can stay here. The evil and the wicked can never find this place. So it's like the Harry Potter movie from Order of the Phoenix Hall Room of Requirement, is it? Um, except it's a little much different. But like no one can see it. No teachers can see it, no other people can see it. Only the people who are good. I don't know what I'm saying. Most of the people here are cursed. How come these people remember who I am? The curse are not affected by the condition of someone else's curse. Your condition is simple. Everyone's forgotten you are the crown princess. But because these people here are cursed, they still remember your title. It goes without saying that fairies and witches are also not affected. Come, princess, let me introduce you to the few boarders we have in the Martian. Parfait beckons a serving girl over. This is Anise. She helps out in the Martian, does most of the cooking. I'm sure you understand why she's working here now. Hmm. I believe she deserves an apology. Miss Delora, what are you talking about? Don't you worry your sweet little head over it. You don't remember what the, this ice princess did to you? Huh? I have nothing to apologize for. Clumsiness does not befit, befit a palace maid. I only did what, what, what was necessary. Girl, you were cruel. Well, it's nice to meet me, princess. I'm Anise Willow. I hope you get along. Um, really? This is how you're going to start doing good? I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Please, you two. No, no fighting. She's a pacifist. I hold my tongue as Parfait leads me to two people whose faces are incredibly familiar. These are faces I've seen in the palace before. This is... Jurian? Warian? Valenti and Garland Berlot. Berlot. Belrot. <gasps> okay, so this is Warian. I think Jorian. I don't know if this J is silent. How did he. How did you know? Both of you are in the Order of Caldera. That's right. 
There are two about Sir Alcaster's best nights. It was a big surprise when they both left a year ago. I only found out recently that it was because they acted against Sir Alcaster's orders. They were stripped of their titles and dishonorably discharged from service. What are you two doing here? We help the fairies. They and Anise are exceptions, and are allowed in this tavern without the curse. Warian, I'm just going to say Warian. Warian and Garland lend us their strength to help protect the Martian. Protect? From the witches, they do anything to make sure their curses remain unbroken. And what about you? I am an exception. Also, I'm good. You keep forgetting the good part. Quote unquote, good part. Remember, not all witches are evil. Your curse is a test. A test? Originally, the wicked were cursed so that they could learn and change. I mean, hold on. Originally, the wicked were cursed so they could learn and change. It's so hard to keep track. Uh, sorry. Uh, their curses were meant to teach them a lesson. I'm hoping your curse will teach you a lesson too, Ace Princess. I really am only trying to help you. I don't need you to show me how to change. I just want my life back. Well, to do that, you'll have to break your curse. Try and make some friends, Princess. They might be able to help you break your curse. Oh, I'd love to hang around and watch the Princess try to be friendly. We have work to do, Delora. Fine. Try not to make any more enemies, Princess. Bye. <clears throat> the instant Parfait and Delora leave the room, the temperature drops several degrees. Oh, that's weird. Now that I'm alone, I feel the cold star stares return. Disgust. Contempt. As if I'm the reason they're cursed and have to take refuge in the Martian in the first place. Make friends. All I've ever had was are my dolls. I've never needed friends. I'll break this curse my own. I was told it was rude to stare. One man suddenly stands up, the anger apparent on his face. His hands clench and unclench into fists as he glares at me pointedly. Warren and Garland place themselves in front of me, shielding me from the man. You know their roles. What happened in the past stays in the past. And no one is allowed to harm anyone else in the Martian. If you cannot comply, you're no longer welcome here. No matter. The Ice Princess will get what's coming to her. He throws one last glare my way before sitting down again. Break the rules and you'll get what's coming to you. That goes for everyone here. Morian's tone is cold and firm. There's no doubt that she means what she says. So these are the Grey Knights of the Order of Caldera. The Martian begins to settle down and everyone eventually goes back to their conversations and meals. I walk toward an empty table, realizing that I'm being deliberately ignored. I become immersed in my thoughts as I sit down. One thought, however, comes to me immediately. They hate me. They hate me somehow when I've only ever left this palace twice in my life. How did this happen? The only people who treated me with any respect were Anis, Warren, and Garland. Is it because I cannot remember who I am? Maybe being the Martian is not such a good idea. I doubt anyone here wants to help me bring my curse. They'd probably rather see me suffer under its weight. Three good deeds. How am I supposed to complete three when I do not know if I can even accomplish one? May I join you? <clears throat> May I join you? I look up and stare in shock at the beautiful lady from the toy shop. Her beauty still manages to take my breath away. What is she doing here? You. You were in the toy shop. Ah, yes. I was there picking up some items for a friend. I'm humbled and you still remember me. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Miss Karma. Your name is Karma. A suitable name for someone as beautiful as me. No. Karma, your narcissism is going to scare the princess away. Oh? You are that mag magician boy. Boy? Oh, how appropriate. Boy. <laughs> Call me that one more time and I'll ruin that pretty face of yours. You would hit a lady out, Savage. Anyway, I'm Waltz Creswell. I have the Neverland curse. What about you, Princess? What's your fairy tale curse? Does everyone share what their curse is? We talk about it freely in the Martian. The whole point is helping each other break our curses after all. I mean, haven't you heard that, girl? Hard to do what that if we keep our fairy tales quiet. He pauses and narrows his eyes slightly. Well, some people keep their fairy tales a secret. He eyes Karma briefly, cocking an eyebrow. His smile never leaves Karma's face. Has anyone managed to break their curse? I've been told that a few have. A few? It's not very reassuring. 
Well, at least the curses can be broken. I cannot particularly say that reassures me either. That what ails you, darling? Is it your curse? You can talk to us about it. Tell us what it is. Cinderella. Oh goodness, Cinderella. That explains the nature of your curse, only it's been reversed. How well, hasn't it? Riches to rags. That's one way of putting it. Carmi, you're not helping. You really are better off ignoring him, princess. He mostly sleep speaks nonsense. He So this is Peter Pan curse. Who's got the Peter Pan Never Neverland curse? Princess <clears throat> Pervay's voice takes me by surprise. I didn't even notice her entering the room again. May I speak with you? I'd like you to meet someone, though I'm sure you already know him quite well. Oh, my stepbrother. Rod? So you really are cursed. I was there that... I was the one that gave Sebi the rod so that he had some way to voice his opinions. Sebi? That's his rabbit. Short for Sebastian. Cute, isn't it? It's nice to see you, princess. Sebi's voice changes when he greets me. The tone he uses lower whenever it speaks to Rod. Perhaps that is what Rod's voice actually sounds like. Wait, if he remembers me, what is that? Does that mean the mermaid's curse? He's got the little mermaid curse. Okay. He lost his voice, in other words. What? That is my curse. Rod has been mute all this time because he is cursed. Does anyone have everyone else know? Obviously, they're my family. Even the king? He knows as well. So am I the only one who never told? I didn't think it particularly care either way. He is not wrong. Yet I cannot believe I did not know. I was left out once again. What are you doing here? I have been trying to help Ra with the curse. That is why it comes to the Martian from t Wait, sorry. I... I have been trying to help Ra with his curse. That is why it comes to the Martian from time to time. But I don't even want... Anyway, I only came here today to confirm that you were truly cursed. I wanted to see it with my own eyes. It was a big surprise when I woke up one day and you weren't in the palace. An even bigger surprise when I found out no one remembered you. It's been days since I was cursed. I wonder, how are things in the palace? Livelier, happier. Ha happier? I never seen my family happier than they are now. I'd say it, a good, it is a good thing you aren't a princess anymore. <gasps> I'd always thought Rod didn't really care about me regardless, but, but this is the truth? So that is how, this is how you truly feel? Um, I'm gonna go with dot dot dot. You hate me. You have no right to start acting the victim now. Now when you're treating my family such disrespect. The only reason I didn't say anything before is because Emily didn't want me to. So it's purple now. I'm happier too now that you're gone. I don't have to pretend I like you anymore. I'm gonna return to the palace now. Yikes. I'm gone and they're all happier? Your very existence has been erased in the palace. They've never known you. Yikes. That's a scary thought. That doesn't mean they're happy without you. Even the king. What did I expect? What? Why did he bring me here? The people in the Martian, they... I... I shouldn't have left you alone in there. I'm sorry. You knew how they felt about me. What have I ever done to them? Now is the right time to explain. When will it ever be the right time? So many things have already happened to you. I need you to be patient, Natalie. Okay. Has the prince already left? Yes, yes, he has. Princess, we'll talk about this later. For now, you must focus on breaking her curse. Did I miss something? No. Right. Maybe the fairy is right. I don't think I'm ready to find out how I made so many people hate me. Well, Parfait, I think it's time we get down to business. What should we do with her? What are you talking about now? You, of course. You've got nowhere to go, right? She is right. I think back to the days I spent on the streets and shiver. I'll do anything so long as I don't have to go back there. The princess can stay in the marsh with me and the rest of my boarders. I'd almost forgotten what hope felt like. But you'll have to work in exchange for room. I celebrated too soon. What? Magic has its limitations, like anything else. Money doesn't appear out of thin air, not even for a fairy. The Martian doesn't attract many customers, since only the curse and a few others can enter. I sell my potions here and there, but I have several hungry mouths to feed, and my funds are tight. 
I thought fairies lived in luxury. Parfait, are you broke? <laughs> what a bitch's question. Ouch. Even the ice princess can tell. <laughs> and yet you still take people in? That's always been how Parfait operates. She's good nature to a fault. I'm told suffocating beneath my debt will be what kills me. Why don't you just leave? I assume you make enough to take care of yourself. Leave someone who's in need of help? I can never. And that princess is how goodness works. How goodness works? I'm just starting to be a human again? It's not as if I accept freeloaders. All my boarders help me run the marsh and do errands. The princess has never worked a day in her life. I doubt she'll be useful. If karma can be useful, I know anyone can. Hmm, I've yet to see karma be anything but useless. Princess, you're more than welcome to stay if you're willing to help out. It's the least you can do in exchange for a roof over your head and three meals a day. Oh, and shoes. Do I even have a choice? I toss and turn in bed, unable to fall asleep. The mattress is hard and the sheets are itchy, nothing at all like the bed I had in the palace. Yeah, that's a new feeling, for sure. What I would give for my old bed again, for any of the comforts of home. I miss my dolls. Lady Parfait! Lady Parfait! I sit up immediately. What is going on? I leave my room to investigate. Some of the other Martian boarders, Waltz, Warren, and Garland, are sitting on the sette, looking anxious. What's happening? Sorry, did we wake you? No, but the noise Garland was making would have woken the dead. Warren and I found an injured man while we were doing our rounds. We brought him here. An injured man? Wait, what are you doing outside? It's almost one in the morning. Nothing you need to worry about. Lady Parfait and Anise are tending the man now. These people. Will they just help anyone they find on the streets? What if this man is dangerous? I mean, she has a point. Do you think the witches got to him? It's possible. We'll have to find out when he wakes up. The next day, Parfait reveals that the man only severed minor head injuries. She says she is that she expects him to wake soon. I look at the tray of food in my hands. Anise has asked me to bring it up to the stranger's room while she finishes the rest of her cooking. I would never have been asked to do this in the palace. Goodness, what's that portrait done to you deserve that look? I must say that it's odd to see the princess doing something nice for someone. What do you want? I have something to ask the man that was brought in last night. Seeing as you're being good enough to deliver breakfast, I thought I'd just tag along with you. If you're going, just bring this tray up to yourself. You are not in any position to delegate your duties to me, Miss Natalie. Come on, our guest must be famished. See no way out, I follow Dolores the spare room the man had been put in. Come in. Come in. Oh, okay. This guy. You'll see in a minute. I thought this man, the man, would have been old, but to my surprise, he looks young, probably in his early 20s. He seems lost in Revere as he stares at a small notebook. Good morning, good to see you awake and breathing. The man looks up at her when she speaks. Instant, he sees her, his eyes widen. Why is he staring at us like that? Uh-oh. <laughs> Am I dead? What? I'm in heaven. Or maybe... You two are angels. He's got a thing for the ladies. That's what his thing is. Um, you two are... <laughs> You two are angels that have fallen out of it. I see. I see. What can a humble gentleman like myself do for you lovely ladies? Ah, oh, you can join me on this bed. It's very comfortable and there's plenty of room for the both of you. I'll follow your lead on this one, princess. Princess? Oh, of course. Such a beautiful lady could only be a princess. Look at the noble way you hold up the tray. There's a tray <laughs> I want to. Let's do it. Let's read the tray at him or stay silent. What the frick? Let him get away with it. Throw the tray at him. Can I throw the tray at him? I'm tempted to let you. I mean, it's not that bad. It's very stupid. Hopefully, it's not a hard tray. Feisty as well. Oh, be still, my beating heart. Huh? You. Oh, he's awake. Oh, a fourth. <laughs> Third lady. <laughs> Another lovely lady has entered my chambers. <laughs> I don't think my heart can handle the perfection of three of you at once. <laughs> I, 
I think I know I cast Casanova here and got those head injuries. Some lady decided she had enough of this rubbish and wanted to punish him. Delora, patience. He may not even be in the right state of mind right now. He might be a drunk. <laughs> he did take injuries to the head after all. The man finally stops to look just at me. He narrows his eyes and stares so hard I almost want to slap him. <laughs> well, Liz, Liz is looking at my eyes, right? What? You're familiar. But, no, it's impossible. Aren't you the crown princess? What are you doing here? <laughs> he knows me. Oh, God. If he knows, then he's... Well, he's definitely not a witch or a fairy. Can only mean one thing if he recognizes the ice princess. What is your name, good sir? I think it's Rumpelstiltskin. I would answer any questions they ask of me, madam, but... The man looks down the notebook in his hand. I don't remember. Amnesia? I know everything about Anjali, and yet I don't know the first thing about myself. Except that I have the Rumpelstiltskin curse. I knew it! I called it! I played this game a couple times, like maybe three or two times. I played the whole game, actually. Oh, but we're not gonna do that. Because <laughs> it's a long game. Rumpelstiltskin? Is that a fairy tale? I knew it. He's got the fairy tale curse. Fairy tale curse. Do you remember how to break it? From what I remember, I need to somehow collect theory memories and get them to appear in this journal as entries. He's got the book. A book. He shows us. Oh, it's a notebook. <laughs> he shows us the notebook he's been holding on to since we entered the room. My first memory is of awake, waking up and holding this. I thought there would be information here, but it's empty. Another victim of the curse. Another victim of the curse. You must be tired, Natalie. We'll leave your breakfast here and we'll give you some time to yourself. We'll be outside if you need anything else. Rumpelstiltskin. What is that fairy tale about? I don't. I never really paid attention to Rumpelstiltskin or Hunchback Notre Dame. I wasn't really watching those as a kid, but anyways, just some of them I didn't watch. Dolores does not do a good job of hiding, hiding her laughter. She snorts and across my arms, embarrassed. Mother burned this fairy tale, the fairy tales in the palace before he got the chance to read all of them. Hmm. Fine, fine. I'll keep it short. Once upon a time, there was a girl that was said to be able to spin straw into gold. I kind of remember the live-action old, um, film. That's all I remember about this. The king found her and locked her up in a tower. He said he wouldn't let her out until she turned all the straw in the room into gold. But the girl was just a regular human girl. She knew she would never be able to turn the straw into gold and feared that she would be locked up forever. That was when an odd little man, a midget, sorry, um, but literally a short dude. That was when an odd little man appeared before her and offered to do the job uh, for her if she gave him some of their return. Um, the girl gave him her necklace, and the man spent the rest of the night spinning the straw into gold. However, the girl wasn't released. The second night she was given more straw to spin, little man appeared once more. This time, she gave him her ring. On the third night, the king ordered her to spin the straw one last time, and if she did, she would be released and made his queen. However, the night, the girl had nothing left to give the little man, so they made an agreement. He would spin the straw into gold for her, so long as she gave him her first child. I remember that somewhat. I think it was a 40s film or a 50s film. I don't, can't remember what year that was. Um, I personally never understood why the girl would want to marry the king in the first place. Hush, I'm trying to tell a story here. Years passed, the queen finally gave birth to her first child. That night, the odd little man returned and demanded his dues, but the queen didn't want to give up her child. Why should she? <laughs> it's not his. The man then said that he wouldn't take the child the queen was able to guess his name in three days. The man's name was Rumpelstiltskin. Stiltskin. Did she guess it? Oh yeah, the night before her time was officially up, the queen was drawn to the forest by the sound of a little voice. She saw the little man celebrating his upcoming victory, singing about how nobody had or would have guessed his real name, which was Rumpelstiltskin. He does not sound particularly smart, no. So agrees the general populace. Sometimes I wonder how Hans is able to come up with such tall tales. Well, the Martian is opening, so I expect another busy day. Especially busy for you, Natalie. You need to start coming up with good deeds. The Am Amnesiac? 
Casanova was allowed to stand the Martian with other boarders. Amnesia. Casanova. Um, make, because he still seemed capable, Parfait sent him to work at one of the Martian servers. Anissa's protest that he remained in bed fell on deaf ears. Parfait couldn't very well throw him out, not while knowing that he had nowhere to go. In his fairy tale curse, he belongs here. I would be incapable of showing him such kindness given all the nonsense he spouts at us. The people that frequent the Martian began to steadily ignore me altogether, like I did not exist. It is better than the stares and the hateful looks. Rumple, you aren't here to flirt. But this lovely lady is unattended. Sir Rumple, please, you're making me blush. Because this man couldn't remember his name, he fashioned one from his own curse. Rumple. <laughs> I think it suits him. That's a funny name. Just Rumple. Rumple. I'm Rumple. I'll never understand, Parfait. This enormous waste of space is about as useful as karma. <laughs> I've returned. Speak of the devil. Did you miss me? <laughs> so stupid. Karma had left abruptly yesterday, saying that she had something very important to care of. It's actually a dude dressed as a woman. I don't know if he's a crossdresser. I believe he is, though. Uh, Waltz trails in after her, carrying several boxes in his arms. He's disguised himself. Um, why am I carrying these? Because you made me run the errand for you at the toy shop the other day. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. I'm going to drop them now. Those boxes contain very important contents. Welcome home, Miss Carmen. Nice to see you've survived the trip, Waltz. Thank you, niece. So this is our new housemate. I'm sorry about my bad. <laughs> so this is our new housemate. We have not had the opportunity to meet. I am... <gasps> oh, no. Oh no, what's <laughs> actually too We're all surprised when Rumble suddenly reaches out to grab Karma's hand, always infatuated with his <laughs> in love. My life before this moment has been a depressing monarch monochrome. Now that you have entered my blank bleak existence, I see everything in bla beautiful blazing color. And nothing shines more brightly, more vividly than you. Eh what happens? I'm Rumple, my sweet. Let us talk of marriage. <laughs> I stare at Karma, waiting for her to flirt back. At the very least, I expect her to wave Rumble away for being a fool. But she remains eerily silent. Answer my angel, I beg of you. Ooh, she's getting real mad. Keep. Say the word and it's done. Your filthy hands off of me. She got a little, she got a little dark. <gasps> Ow! Not again. I would never be interested in the likes of you. She's pissed. <laughs> Go on, lad. Give him a good beating like the one he gave to me. My queen, there's no need for violence. What did you call me? Please calm down. Rumble is still recovering. What is going on? We're getting in a fight right now. Karma is a man. Just didn't take Kylie being flirted with. There we go. Or proposed to. She is a man? But your voice, your face, your breasts. <laughs> Ow! That's what you're focusing on, pervert? <laughs> so stupid. I worship all aspects of female form, but my particular favorite has always been... She's about to... <laughs> Ow! Just... Do yourself a favor and shut up. Sorry, do yourself a favor and shut up. I never would have known. But why would he do this? Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Is it because of your curse? Yes. I I am undone. My heart is in pieces. You knew him for ten minutes. For those that can hear the music of their heart like I, it takes only a look to fall madly, irre irretrievably in love. I must leave. My heart will need time to heal. <laughs> the Martian attracts all sorts, doesn't it? <laughs> that one is per entirely Parfait's fault. Alright, alright, nothing to see here. Back to work. I am still in shock from what I learned earlier. Karma, a man? It is not fair that he is as beautiful as a woman. If the female population of Anjali knew the truth, Karma would be hunted down for making the rest of us pale in comparison. 
Anise being quote unquote good, I suppose, prepared a special lunch to welcome the newest Ma Martian boarders. They have all been invited to the private dining room. Excuse me, is Lady Parfait here? Princess Prince Rod, perfect timing. Please join us for lunch. I only came to talk to you, Lady Parfait. But I'm hungry. I have no wish to make you wait while I eat. Come join us. Please, Your Highness, I need too much as usual. You must help us finish. Very well. A cursed prince is in a cursed prince. What an eccentric collection of friends you have, Lady Parfait. I wouldn't say they are we're eccentric, necessarily. You're the most eccentric one, Rumple. Really now? I, s <laughs> I sit silently in my chair. I am uncomfortable around so many people. Even when Mother was alive, at all my meals alone, since my parents were always too busy to sit down for meals with me. The meals with Ophelia and her children were also always awkward and silent. Somehow the atmosphere here is lively and friendly, even though I barely know anyone here. Is something wrong? Excuse me? You barely touched your food. Don't you like it? Dolores said that she was one of your, that this was one of your favorites. I'm just not used to eating with company. That's all. They say that sharing a meal brings family closer together. Garland. <gasps> I I apologize. Closer together, huh? So, have you made any progress in how to those you know, how to do those good deeds, princess? There's no way of admitting that I do not know even know how to complete one. Oh, I forgot you're not so good on the doing good front. You're not very helpful. Why don't you ask someone to teach you how to be do good? What? Well, that's not something you hear every day. As in, take some kind of lessons? If you're having so much trouble on your own, you should ask someone to give you some advice or teach you. It's as simple as that. What is this I hear? The princess needs advice? Well then, she is in luck. I got the advice. Uh, I happen to give the most excellent advice, and believe me when I say I can teach you almost anything. The princess is indeed lucky as I am available for teaching duties. Oh god, get the hell away, Rumpel. No doubt I'd be the better choice, as I don't go about deceiving the world. Excuse me? Ooh, like <laughs> For one sided flirting to bitter enemies in all the span of a few hours, the man broke my heart. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, I'd also be happy to help you in any way, Camp Princess. Let's do both. <laughs> and I'm sure your stepbrother would be happy to help as well. Uh, decisions, decisions. He's like, oh, do I have to? I... I don't think I would make the best teacher for the sword thing. I only teach the others how to fight. Never mind the fact that Warren herself still struggles to be good. What? Just something I'm good at. You're lucky, aren't you? So many people are willing to help you. Why? Hmm. Why are you all willing to help me? That's what we do in the Martian. We help each other. Lesson number one. Doing good means helping whenever one can. Just let any one of us know if you want our help. Trust no one but yourself. You need not care for anyone but yourself. This is what Mother in the last few years have taught me. I've always been alone and it is easier that way. And yet, these strangers, these people that I've only known for a few days, are so willing to help me when they will gain nothing in return. Is this the goodness I was meant to see? Father? How can I even begin to trust and care for others when I've forgotten how to do so? I'm slowly beginning to understand what I must do. Chapter 2. The Decision I don't see why this is necessary. Of course this is necessary, princess. You work to show you can be useful. For the last half hour, Parfait and Delora have been debating what chores they want to give me. I cannot believe they are seriously going to make me work like a commoner. <clears throat> No freeloaders of the Martian, remember? I mean, no free lo free lo loaders of the Martian, remember? And I can't pull the princess card anymore now that you're a homeless peasant. Being demoted to a homeless peasant is not my fault. If you really think about it, it was kind of me to dominate you. Kind of me to do demote you. I was a dominate. Stop teasing her, Delora. Natalie has had a lot thrown at her already. I'm only speaking the truth. Besides, working to live is a commoner's way of life, but at least it's rewarding. 
<clears throat> but if you do nothing, you get nothing. No food, no clothes, no bed. You are no longer a princess, Natalie. Life here in the marsh is comfortable, and you need to work for comfort. Remember that. What you do is your choice, princess. I mean, what you do is your choice, princess. Do I even have a choice? Not really, no. Let's see. How about cooking duties? Cooking duties. No way, she'd burn a salad. She could be a receptionist. Then we'd lose all of our customers. That's... That's probably true. I'm right here, you know. Sorry. Do you have any useful skills at all? As a princess, I had servants who did everything for me. They cleaned my room, helped my, me dress. How am I expected to possess skills for things I have never done? Aha! Hmm. I have found the perfect job for Cinderella. Ta-da! Natalie will be in charge of sweeping the Martian floors. What? Perfect. Even she should be able to do should be able to do that. Could you, princess? I mean, could you, princess? I refuse. But look, I even put a cute little ribbon on the broom just for you. It's your very own special broom. A princess does not clean. Hard-headed as ever. Don't worry, I have a fix for this. Suddenly, the broom flies into my hands. I pull helplessly along as the thing begins to sweep the floors. I try to pull my hands away, but they may as well be glued to the broom. They do not bolt budge. What have you done? You should be thanking me. I'm helping you with your duties. Delora, isn't this a little too much? Oh, nonsense. The princess is learning useful new skills. Mr. Broom will teach her everything she needs to know. If the floor is dirty, Mr. Broom will come to life and start sweeping. Sweep, sweep, sweep. And if not, and it will not stop until the floors are spotless. What? Come on, parfait. We've got things for a cup of tea. We got time for a cup of tea. But she'll be fine. A little sweeping never killed anyone. You are dreadful. Enjoy your time, Mr. Broom. Wait, did they really just leave? Slow down. The broom begins to sweep faster. Despite my protest, I'm still forced like a papa to sweep the floors with grudging tenacity. Wow, sparkly clean. I can barely catch my breath after that. Princess, perfect sent me to check. How lovely. It's so clean. I can see my reflection on the floorboards. I'm impressed. Do not even think about stepping into this room with your dirty shoes. Goodness, I do know princesses could be such terrifying creatures. You're aware that the Mar Martian is opening soon, yes? The floor isn't going to stay clean forever. Then do not open the Martian. <clears throat> I do sympathize with you, princess. It's difficult adjusting to the commoner's life. What would you know about that? More than you think. What? Oh, did I let that slip? That was my mistake. Karma just smiles at me, his eyes gleaming with playful mischief. He is definitely hiding something. My hands are red and sore from all the sweeping I've done today. I remember the salve Anise offered me when I first woke up in my room. Surely that will help somewhat. I apply it to my hands and find to my surprise that it is very effective. Most of the redness quickly fades along with the pain. Is that what my life will be like if I do not break the curse? Forced to work day in and day out? I cannot let things stay as they are. I must act. I lay down to rest. Tiredness falls upon me like a heavy suffocating blanket. I close my eyes and feel myself shift into the darkness of sleep. Despite having slept for hours, I'm still tired when I wake. I glance back on my hands and remember the salve's effectiveness. Whatever niece gave me really works. I should ask her to make me more. I feel like this is not the last time I will need it. <clears throat> I must act quickly. The sooner I break the curse, the better. The people who offer to help me are all here. Whom should I ask for help? I'm gonna ask Karma. I find Karma sitting quietly at the bar. I thought he was a picture of elegance when I saw him at the toy shop, but he's really just conceited. I walk over to where he is. Oh, Princess Natalie, you look stunning as always in your 
work clothing. They must be mocking me, but it does not matter. I'm here because I want you to teach me about goodness. Not even a compliment in return? I'm rather offended. Relax, princess. I'm just teasing you. I notice. Now, can you answer my question? Princess, you do so wound me. This is going nowhere. Maybe I should ask someone else. Princess, wait. You made the right decision in coming to me for help, I assure you. <clears throat> the best people, princess, look beautiful. The way you look outside has to match what you have inside. How is that supposed to help me? Are you implying that I'm not beautiful? Of course not. I only suggest you smile more often. Smiling will not help me accomplish a good deed. And smiling has nothing to do with beauty. Actually, it kind of does. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's not true at all. People who are beautiful smile all the time. <laughs> like myself. He's not helping at all. Don't give me that look, darling. A real smile lifts the heart and takes stress off of the mind. And? Well, in order to do good, you must first change yourself. Make yourself more beautiful on the outside and the inside. I really don't know why I came to him for advice. But what did I expect from such a flamboyant man? He is as shallow as a puddle of water. Damn. I stare in horror at the floor. Gravel and sand are embedded between the floorboards. The wood beneath my feet is covered in a thick muck. Uh-oh. Hello? Uh, oh no! <laughs> Stop! I never thought I'd see this. The princess is actually sweeping. I'd more say it's more like the broom is sweeping and the princess is just along for the ride. <laughs> Lady Parfait, your orders have arrived. Where should I put them? At the back, please. Thank you. I glare at Garland as he begins to move. You! <gasps> you are dirty in the floor! Sorry. <laughs> Garland dashes across the floor long steps in an attempt to leave as few footprints as possible. This was Dolores doing, wasn't it? Is it, is it obvious? I mean, is it obvious? This is which having fun written all over it. I need water. Wow, completely spotless. You are the worst. <laughs> Don't be mad at the broom, princess. It is only trying to help. It is doing nothing but making my life miserable. Lady Parfait, I must speak with you. I look up at the witch that has just entered. She is a regular at the Martian, and according to Parfait and Delora, a good witch. She orders tea here from time to time. She has mud on her shoes. Why is she glaring at me like that? I believe it's because of her your shoes, dear. I've just cleaned the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. I will clean up after myself right away. Good. The princess is something else. I've never seen a witch so frightened of someone before. Yeah. The witch hurriedly cleans up the track she'd make she'd made coming in before going to speak with Parfait. Even though Parfait says that Delora and this witch is good, I do not trust her judgment. Especially not when she considers Delora, who ruined my life, a good person. I put the broom back in the, its resting place before double checking my work. Now that I am done, I can continue to work on breaking my curse. Who should I ask for help today? I'm gonna keep asking for karma, because karma's supposed to help me. <clears throat> I find Karma sitting on the tables looking out a window. You're being quiet today. What a rare sight. Oh, princess. Why would why would you be so surprised to see me? Because it's an honor every time you visit me. Have you come for my advice? I want you to tell me how to do a good deed. My mind is so straightforward. What is he talking about? It's really simple. You just do something without strings attached. No strings attached? Yes, you do something for someone that asks him then to pay you back. It is hard to wrap my head around doing such a thing. Why would I do something without needing to? Have you done such a thing for someone before? Of course I have, princess. That was a long pause. It was only a thoughtful one. Right. Is that all? I believe so. That tidbit of wisdom ought to serve you well. A month has passed and I have yet to compl complete even one good deed. Not for any lack of trying, though. I have been asking around for advice on how to be a good person and received various answers. What makes someone good? I'd say being selfless. I think it's important that you consider another person's feelings. Patience. The ability to soothe even the most broken of hearts. Forget I asked. 
bravery, loyalty. You must be beautiful both on the inside and out. Right. Must I be all of those things in order to be quote unquote good? Corn parfait, I cannot just pretend. It has to come from my heart. I place man on my chest and consider the steady pulse of my heartbeat. That will not be easy. I close my eyes thinking of all the possible ways I might be able to break my curse. But in the end, my mind is blank. Mother, what am I supposed to do? A dream? Your personal feelings are nothing but a weakness for others to exploit. That is why you do not show them. You only show them that you are strong. Yes, mother. You must not let false kindness deceive you. People use niceties to trick you into exploiting your weak emotions. But you can trust me, Natalie. I will never hurt you. I will never lie to you. I am all you need. I love you, Natalie. I love you too, mother. God, that's toxic. Um, how are those lessons of yours going? I hope you're not giving anyone a difficult time. I'm the only one having a difficult time. I'm the only one having a difficult time. Have you tried pairing up with someone? Pairing up? Some of the people in the tavern are pair up to assist each other. Two heads are better than one, as they say. It's not a bad idea, but the problem is with her. Who's going to volunteer to pair up with Ice Princess? She has a point. People may not glare at me anymore, but it does not escape me that I am still disliked. Most of the boarders of Martian volunteer to help her, remember? And I haven't heard any of them retract their offers. It's only a matter of time. Stop it, Delora. It's your choice, Princess. Pairing up is only a suggestion. Would pairing up with someone really help me break my curse? What if they end up being an annoyance instead? Princess! Um, excuse me, Princess? <gasps> I'm sorry for disturbing you, but you've just been staring at your tray and the customer's waiting for his order. Of course. Dolor has me helping a niece today. The Martian is unexpectedly busy and they cannot keep up with all the customers. Stop daydreaming, Natalie. Food doesn't deliver itself. I do not need you to tell me that. I stretch out on my bed. The stiff mattress does little to soothe my achy muscles. I was on my feet the entire day struggling to keep up with a steady stream of people that came into the Martian. I have never seen the Martian this busy. I roll onto my stomach and bury my face into my pillow. My arms and legs protest the movement. I refuse to live this type of life much longer. I need to break this curse as soon as possible. Why don't you pair up with someone? Pairing up might not be such a bad idea. Now we get to choose. We can do karma. We can't. We, these two are locked, but we could do these. I'm gonna do karma. Chapter three: Secret Practices. I decide to go search for karma as soon as I am done, with Mr. Broom, or as soon as it is done with me. He should be sitting at the bar or at a table. I find him at the usual table talking to Waltz, who has his hands on a box. Why, if it isn't the princess, lovely morning, isn't it? It is the same as any other. Nonsense. Every morning brings new opportunities, right, Waltz? I guess so. Every day there's another chance for a good deed, princess. Right. No clever comments today, princess? I do so enjoy them. Maybe coming to karma was a bad idea. I would love to stay and offer advice, but Waltz and I better be off. We do have work to do. You mean that you're going to put me to work? Work? Parfait asked us to pick up some provisions for the tavern. She asked us, but in the end it will be me carrying everything. You'd make a lady carry it. You'd make a lady carry everything? Karma suddenly stops and whirls, look at me with wide eyes. Oh, I cannot say that I like the glimmer in his eyes. How would you like to tell Princess Natalie? I'm sure this would count as one of your good deeds. I'm pretty sure that's not how this works. Oh, Waltz, you're no fun. Helping Karma carry things does not sound pleasant, but I'll go. <gasps> Truly? Oh my, Waltz, it seems I will not be requiring your assistance today. Wow, what a lazy ass. Princess, are you sure? Perhaps this might be considered good. Besides, I'll finally get to leave this place for the first time since I've been here. I am sure. Okay, take good care of the Princess Karma. Of course. <clears throat> For the rest of the day, Karma takes me to different shops around the town, reading off of a long list and giving me the coins to buy things. I notice that the townspeople treat me nicely when the two of us are together. I do not understand why everyone likes Miss Karma so much, but maybe it's because I do not really know him. 
We stop in the middle of the town and sit at a small cafe on the outskirts to take a break. Miss Karma is still the picture of elegance. Why do you dress like a woman? <gasps> Darling, not so loud. <laughs> Why is this even a secret? It's related to my curse. I mentioned that before, didn't I? What was your curse again? Karma was one of the only people in town who did not share what his curse was. It's not my curse even so important. You know what my curse is, so tell me what yours is. You dragged me around town to help carry your things. But Princess, those weren't even my things. They weren't mine either. Okay, I will tell you, though it is very sad. I do not think a curse is meant to be a happy thing. I have the beauty's curse. Oh, it is what forces people to fall in love with me every time they see my handsome face. Is that really a curse? It does not seem awful at all. Terrible, isn't it? Uh, what should I say? It's terrible or it's not that terrible? Um, I'm gonna say it's not that terrible. I don't think it's that terrible. You can work around it. You have your disguise. Yes, I suppose I do, don't I? People loving you isn't such a bad thing, is it? Everyone loves Miss Karma. Meanwhile, I cannot even get my father to look in my direction. I prefer a person to love me as I am, not because you're compelled to, because of a curse. I can feel his eyes on me. I refuse to look at him, thinking that his gaze must be filled with judgment. Princess, are you okay? Why wouldn't I be? You look a little lost in thought. I am fine. Still, it feels like I'm missing something. Is that really the entirety of his curse? But don't people fall in love with you when you are a woman as well? No, princess. That love is admiration or appreciation. Something less. Sometimes lust. And when you're a man? They swarm to me like moths to light. It becomes suffocating. Whom does it affect? The curse only affects women. It is a condition of the curse they... That they be a woman and that I be a man. It's part of the fairy tale. Which fairy tale? I think it's Beating the Beast. The one with... Oh. Karma suddenly stands up and points at a man selling red apple-like candies. He pulls me over and insists that we try one. I try to bring up the subject of the curse again, but to no avail. Karma somehow manages to be distracted for the, by the, for the rest of the day and is able to effectively dodge my questions. Is Karma hiding something from me? Why would he? I thought pairing up meant helping each other break our curses. I don't think he trusts me yet. Does he not want to break his curse? Oh, thank you so much, Natalie. We were in dire need of these supplies. I supervised her well, didn't I? Of course, dear. He did not do anything. <gasps> Princess, you wound me. It's the truth. But we had that nice talk. You avoided half my questions. Karma lets out an exasperated sigh that becomes a very forced yawn. I'm going to go to bed. Today has been a tiring day. Please excuse me, darling. Sleep well. Sleep well, Karma. I think I scared him. Karma walks away, leaving me alone with Parfait. It's not so bad, you know. I do not know why I agree to work with him. Give him a chance, Natalie. Patience? Hello. I did not get a single good deed today. It's not just about the act, but about the intentions. Did Karma just use me, then? I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Tonight I will rethink my partnership. I barely slept that night. When I wake up the next day, my body is sore from carrying supplies around town yesterday. The more I think about karma, the more my anger boils inside of me. How could I not have gotten a good deed yesterday? I decide to follow him first thing in the morning. I see him at his usual table once again staring out the window. A dark aura seems to surround him, and I notice that no one is sitting with him today. Karma! He keeps staring outside, and his eyes are glassy. Karma! <gasps> Oh, Princess, good morning. It is far from a good morning. I did not sleep at all last night. What a shame. His voice is surprisingly cold, his tone rather dismissive. I was too busy thinking about yesterday. <clears throat> you told me that helping you would maybe help me complete a good deed. I pointed my necklace, which hasn't changed at all since I received it. Do you see? Not another piece. You get pieces out to your glass slipper. That's charming. I was thinking that pairing up with you was a bad idea. <gasps> Princess, did you didn't just say that you were paired up with me? I did, you must have known. Oh my, I assumed that you wanted to help me. I didn't know you were pairing up with anyone. That's right, I never tell him directly I wanted to partner up. Should I have? Well, it does not matter what I say anymore because I do not think you can help me. Princess, I can't help you do a good deed. You have to do them on your own. I can present with you with opportunities, though. Opportunities? We see her first by thawing the ice around your heart. So even karma is calling me the ice princess. At least I speak my mind and don't pretend to be someone I am not. And I do not promise things I cannot deliver either. <laughs> That's really bad to do. Princess, I did believe you misinterpreted my words yesterday. That is not my fault. True. 
Patience is a virtue. Now, if you could, I would like some time alone. I did not sleep well yesterday. Just the same as me? Wow. Didn't sleep well? Oh dear, that makes all three of us. Um, dear, that makes all three of us. I turn around and see Rumble appear at the front door. He strides across the table with a confident grin on his face and then takes another seat. Karma lets out a sigh. Foul oh, man, what are you doing here? You flirt with a man once and he hates you, is that it? No, you flirt with a man and then you insult him necessarily. Oh, I thought that was all in good fun. Something about the expression of Rumble's face tells me that he is not true at all. That is not true at all. Are they always going to be at each other's throats now? What are you doing here, Rumble? I couldn't help but overhear that you were looking for a partner, Princess. I thought I might offer my assistance since I know that I can make you far happier than this fool over here. Would you like me to hit you again? What is the problem, sir? I only can provide assistance where you cannot. Rumble turns to me, grabs my hand, and winks at me. What do you say, Princess? We could be wonderful partners in no time at all. I swear I would have your heart a flutter. Oof. <laughs> okay. Before I can slap his hand away, Karma slaps him instead. I cannot help this surprise on my face. <clears throat> Would you like another slap? I'm in no mood for pleasantries today. I don't know how I ever mistook you for a lady or the most brutish man here. <laughs> slap. <laughs> a slap for each cheek, darling. Would you like a third? Rumble stands abruptly from the table and glares at Karma. I can almost see electricity bouncing between the two of them as they stare over my head at each other. I see War Warian walking toward us with a stern look on her face. I would never hurt a person unnecessarily. Don't resort to violence. My, then that gives me all the openings I need. Stand up for uh. I might stand up. No matter how annoying Rumble is, I don't think he deserves to be abused so much. Besides, Karma does not usually lash out like this. I move to stand in front of Rumble. <gasps> Princess? This is pathetic, Karma. I know you're not in the mood for pleasantries, but that is no excuse to hurt Rumble. Princess, please move. You are acting like a petulant child. <gasps> Fine, you're right. I wasn't expecting to be so easily admit to a mistake. I turned to Rumble. I was only standing up for you, Rumble, because Karma is annoying me. I looked down at my necklace, but there's no extra piece. So that wasn't a good deed either. All right, what's happening over here? Warian comes to stand in front of us, her expression stern. Oh, nothing, my sweet. I was just showing myself out. Thank you, Princess Natalie. Rumble leaves and I'm alone with Karma. He slumps back down into his chair. After making sure they won't do anything rash again, Warian leaves us. I'm sorry, Prince. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I locked him. I'm sorry, Princess. It appears I really was being a child. Rumble is harmless and there was no reason for me to act as uncivilized as I did. What would Father think? Father? Oh, it's nothing, but please, if you would, can you give me some time alone? Fine. I leave Karma sitting there by himself. I return to the front of the tavern where Anise has more chores waiting for me. Today I have to work as a, today I have to work as a server, which is still better than working with Mr. Broom. The usual people are at the tavern and overhear conversations as I work. At one point Garland walks over into the bar and Anise serves him a drink. He looks sullen and I watch him curiously for a few moments. Then I notice that he's staring at Warian, who is talking sternly to two drunken men continuously clacking their bottles together at a table. If you make too much of a scene here, you're going to bother the other customers. But the same people are here all the time, eh? We're not bothering anyone, hun. Hmm. Garn looks so agitated. What is wrong with him? I will not stand to have you call me that again. Loosen up, woman. He may have been a knight at the palace before, but he got no such title now. Garland stands up and I can see silent anger in his eyes. Ooh, he's, getting, he's ready for a fight here. A few people at the bar look up to at him with worry. I may not have no ti I may have no title, but I still demand respect. Um, Sir Garland, are you okay? He looks back at us almost like he's coming out of a trance. He's coming out of his <laughs> anger. I'm fine. Sorry about that, ladies. He sits back down, glancing over more at Julian Warian as she continues speaking to the men. They glance at Garland wearily, their expressions more somber. Why was he acting that way? Garland's usually more composed. Um, Princess, is something on your mind? No. I brush all thoughts of what just have transpired from my mind as I return to my work. Hours go by my body protests to all the learning I have to do, leaning I have to do. Even though I had to carry a lot around town yesterday, it was nice to be out for a while. 
Maybe I'm better off helping him just to avoid the chores in here. At least that stops me from being worked to the bone. Oh, Princess, you're doing very well today. I always perform like this. But today you're delivering everything really quickly. Do you mean to say that I don't perform well on other days? <gasps> no, no, Princess. I only mean to say that today your performance is even better than normal. Is that supposed to be a compliment? I walk away from Anise, who stares after me sadly. If she wanted to give me a compliment, she could have said something about that wasn't so backhanded. As the tavern clears for the day, I finally have time to sit down and relax. As I am sitting there, Rumpel Waltz pulls up a chair and sits in front of me. Hello, princess. I heard from Anissa you were excellent in your job today. Congratulations on improving. Princess? So you're mocking me now, too? Princess, I think you're taking things too seriously. The intention of a compliment is to, well, compliment someone. We're not making fun of you. You were implying that I'm not normally as good as this. We never said you weren't good at this, only that you were better today. Let me give you an example. I put on puppet shows for kids. Sometimes the children come to me, he's Pinocchio, I think, um, and see that the show was even better than usual. Oh no, he's Peter Pan, my bad. So the children telling you that your shows aren't normally satisfactory. Not all, the children always smile, regardless whether they really like the show. So long as you're trying your best, it's all that matters. The people in the bar are always smiling when you deliver food to them, aren't they? No, no one likes me here. Maybe if I smiled, they would smile back. I'm not going to smile for any of them. I did not owe them anything. You don't need to owe anyone a smile. Any smile that isn't owed is fake. Princess, I'm leaving, Waltz. I want some time to myself. I walk upstairs to my bedroom, pointedly ignoring the look of sadness on Waltz's face. Aw, oh, poor Waltz. <sighs> I have been sleeplessly laid on my bed for hours. Sometimes I hear the sounds of people walking through the hallway. Why, who would be up at this time of night? I need to leave and get some fresh air. It is eerily quiet at night. I stop when I hear faint sounds coming from outside. Does it sound like fencing? I'm gonna go outside. Well, I did say I needed some fresh air, no point in backing out now. I walk to the front door. Princess. I turn to see Delora looking at me with amusement flickering in her eyes. Princess, what are you doing? Getting some fresh air. It's dangerous out at night, you know? You can't just keep me inside like some caged bird. I didn't say how to stay inside. I said it was dangerous. You might need to get your ears checked. Then there won't be any problem with me going out right now. Princess, you only hear what you want to hear. You can't go outside without an escort. I'm not going to go far. Before Dolores could stop me, I walk out the front door and head in the direction of the sounds. It literally sounds like sword fighting. I heard swords. You must be the most disobedient princess I've ever met. And you must be the most annoying witch. Dolores lets out an undignified snort as she catches up to me. Fine, then. We'll go on this little night to stroll together. Okay, Dolora. Dolores and I eventually find ourselves in the forest. It's like a peaceful forest. Those sounds. It sounds like metal against metal. Well, I guess with you being partnered with Karma, you would find out eventually. Excuse me? I get the answer to my question when we walk through the trees and come into a clearing. I finally see where the sounds are coming from. He's sword fighting. And his dude... Oh, no, he's still got his hair. Two men stand... It's Garland and him. Karma. Two men stand in the clearing, swords clashing. One of the men's is Garland, who is poised with his sword. It takes me a moment to realize that the other is Karma, who isn't in a dress. So is he who was with Waltz that night. Neither he nor Garland notice us at first. Princess, you're staring. Of course, Sam. What is all of this? A practice session. Karma is a very talented swordsman. He practices and practices at night with either Warrior or Garland, depending on who's not on patrol. Karma can use a sword that well. The king told me once that only knights could have such skill. Just who is Karma? Oh, if it isn't the princess. His voice is nothing like the feminine voice I always hear from him. Karma actually sounds like a man. I notice him looking at me in between his strikes with a little smile. How does he remain so composed and steady with a distraction? princess. Karma quickly finds the opening Garland's hesitant stance and then pins him to the ground with a sword still smiling. To be distracted is to die, Garland. I, I know. The ability to see distractions and then put them in the back of your mind is what every knight should own. You must know everything that is happening around you, but only deal with pertinent things. Yes, sir. Karma strains sword in hand. Moments later, Garland stumbles to his feet and gives an obedient bow. Karma nods at him before sheathing his sword. A slow melancholy begins to creep into my heart. 
For some reason, seeing the sword practice makes me nostalgic, though I am not sure why. What are you practicing for? To protect, princess. Knowing the sword is the same as knowing the shield. It's a means to protect. To protect? I think I remember having this kind of conversation with them before. I can never figure out how to counter an opponent when they're mere inches from my face. My commander called that one the enemy's kiss. A standoff where your eyes lock onto your opponents because of the proximity. The best way to counter that is to feint the sword in the opposite direction. It throws your opponent off because they're not looking. Oh, that makes sense, but the enemy's kiss, what a name. It seems so dramatic for a sword move, doesn't it? Sword play is dramatic though, isn't it? Isn't the most effective sword play not meant to be flashy? Princess, I didn't notice you there. Good morning, princess. While the most effective sword play cannot be predicted, the commander says it needs to be robust and quick. Sometimes sword play can look like dancing, though, which is why some think that professionals are flashy. That seems unnecessary. Everyone has their own methods, their own skills. All of us knights fight for different reasons as well. Isn't that to protect all of us in the palace? Well, yes, but we protect everyone in the castle for different reasons, princess. The knights protect for different reasons. I turn to Karma. But Karma, you are not a knight. No, I most definitely not. Not since, but since Garland and Warian begged me to teach them, I have somehow become their mentor. There's no way Garland and Warian would do that. After all, the both of them were the best knights in Anjali before they were stripped of their titles. Karma actually seeks, speaks the truth. Warian and I really did not, did have to get down on our knees and beg for him to instruct us. What? Is Karma really so talented? So you're finally impressed with me. What do you think, Princess? I'm the picture of elegance in this outfit, aren't I? You know, I don't know why you and Rumble fight so often. You really are very similar, true. Don't compare me to that fool. He has no class. Just because you come from different backgrounds doesn't mean he has less class, okay? So the reason you were so tired today is because you do these practices at night? Oh, I suppose I've been caught red-handed. Why does this have to be the secret? Does it have to do with Karma's curse? But he is not in his disguise now. We could have been working on breaking our curses today. But no, you decided that staying up late into the night and practicing was more important. That was probably why you were grumpy this morning. Well, our protection is vital, don't you think? Garland, you were at the palace. How is it that Karma possesses more skill with a sword than you? Princess. I mean, princess. Karma is special, princess. He's more talented with a sword than a lot of other people. And I do pride myself on becoming a splendid instructor. But never fear, princess, I will help you dispel your curse. After all, you do just suggest that we were still partners. Can you really help me with my curse? But how will you do that by just presenting opportunities? We'll try again tomorrow, darling, but for now, Garland and I have some more work to do. This time, Garland, do not lose focus. Yes, sir. The sound of swords carries through the night air, and for a little wa long while, I stand with Delora watching the two men fight. Karma chides Garland often, telling him that his concentration is waning. Karma is a good swordsman, probably even better than the palace knights. His nimble swordplay repeats again and again in my head, even when I return to the tavern for the night. Natalie, I've told you before that the knights are an unruly bunch. But mother, they are so much fun to watch. They are dangerous, Natalie. Any person with the sword has a potential to use it to on you. But, but father says that those knights are supposed to protect me. That they are, as that is their order. But as people, they may not be so good, Natalie. Not so good? The king has told us that the knights are meant to use swords to protect you, but you cannot trust them completely. Even though father said they would keep me safe, sometimes the people we trust are the most deceitful. And a man with a sword has a weapon to use against you. No matter what he says, be wary that he can turn on you. Haven't I told you before that you should not trust people? But the knights are... Even knights can be treacherous, Natalie. Do not trust a man with a sword. It can be dangerous. Yes, mother, I understand. Try and understand, my sweet. I only want you to be safe. Yes, I understand. <laughs> Chapter 4. 